A disciple is a student. Where there are disciples, there is a master whom they learn from. Jesus Christ had disciples who spent three years with him. During that time, they learned all that they could, not so that they could take his place, but to build upon what he left for us, the Holy Church. In the Orthodox Church, before someone is made a monk or a nun, they are usually considered novices for on average three years. They are disciples at their elders' feet, very similarly to how Christ's disciples learned from him for three years. Likewise, most seminary programs are three years long, in preparation for the priesthood, which is a type of discipleship. The disciples, just as monastic novices and seminarians, learn the faith from the holy books, doctrines, and traditions. But most importantly, they learn to pray, because it is the Holy Spirit which brings us to know Christ. The Lord did not randomly choose men to follow him, adding up to the number 12. The 12 disciples were chosen to replace the 12 tribes of Israel. The Jewish people, who were made up of the 12 tribes of Israel, had mostly been unfaithful to God. Up until this point, the Israelites were known as the people of God. By choosing 12 disciples, Jesus Christ symbolically sets up a new people of God. All 12 of the disciples were Jewish and had descended from one of the 12 tribes, so it wasn't that Jesus was completely replacing the Jewish people. The prophets had foretold of the judgment of the people of Israel for years. They had prophesied that the people of Israel would be cut off, but there would be a faithful remnant. Along with the Gentiles, who the apostles would bring to Christ, the people of God, or the new Israel, would form the church. In the Gospel of Luke, we see the first part of this prophecy in chapter 6, where the twelve disciples are named. Luke is a two-part book, the second part being the Acts of the Apostles, where we see the second part of the prophecy being fulfilled, that is, the conversion of the Gentiles to God. At the second coming of Christ, the entire world will be judged. The choice of the twelve disciples is a foretaste of that as Christ tells the disciples that they will sit as judges of the twelve tribes of Israel, thus showing us a foretaste of the judgment of the world. The twelve disciples, as revealed in Luke 6, are Simon Peter and Andrew, his brother, James and John, the sons of Zebedee, Philip and Bartholomew, Matthew and Thomas, James, the son of Alphaeus, and Simon the Zealot, Jude, the brother of James, and Judas Iscariot, who also became a traitor. Jesus Christ had an inner circle of disciples who went with him to special places, Peter, James, and John. Peter was the head of the disciples, and James and John were Jesus' stepnephews, the sons of Salome, Joseph's daughter from his previous marriage, and so the Lord had great trust in these three. These same three accompanied the Lord where he could only take a small number of people, such as when he raised Jairus' daughter from the dead. The Lord brought these three where some would not be worthy to behold the presence of God's divine energies, like at the Transfiguration. They were also asked to keep watch in the Garden of Gethsemane when our Lord prayed right before his Passion. Sometimes, like with the raising of Jairus' daughter, there was not enough room for all twelve of the disciples to enter. Jesus also didn't want the world to know what he had done yet, so he limited the number. At the Lord's Transfiguration, the uncreated light, that is, the energy of God himself, is present. Judas Iscariot, who would later betray Jesus, would not be able to behold this sight. But in order not to give him reason to betray him, Jesus could not bring all eleven disciples, so he brought his closest three. He needed some witnesses, so that they would understand later, when he was arrested, that he was going to his passion voluntarily, not by force. This is why the same three were also present at the Garden of Gethsemane, where our Lord was betrayed and arrested. Besides the twelve disciples who we often hear of, there were seventy, or according to some sources, seventy-two disciples, who were also followed our Lord around. 
Eusebius, the church historian, says, The names of the apostles of our Savior are known to everyone from the Gospels, but there exists no catalog of the seventy disciples. Saints Hippolytus and Dorotheos of Tyre compiled the earliest lists of these seventy disciples. Just as Judas fell away from Christ and was replaced, similarly, the seventy experienced some replacements over time. Among some of those disciples are James, the stepbrother of Jesus, who later became the first bishop of Jerusalem. Also, Saint Ananias, who baptized the Apostle Paul, Saint Stephen the protomartyr, and Philip, two of the first seven deacons as found in the book of Acts, Saint Timothy and Titus, to whom Christ wrote letters, which appear in the Holy Scriptures, Saint Matthias, who later replaces Judas as one of the twelve, as well as dozens of others. Each of the seventy have their own unique feast days, sometimes grouped with others from the list of seventy, but collectively they are celebrated on January 4th. There were others whose names may not appear in the Bible, but closely followed our Lord. Jesus appeared to over 500 at one time, many of those believed to be disciples and later apostles of the Lord. One of the most important groups often overlooked when discussing the disciples are the women disciples, perhaps the bravest of them all. They were led by the Theotokos, Christ's mother, and included Mary Magdalene, from whom Christ cast out seven demons, and was the sister of St. Lazarus, whom Christ had raised from the dead, Salome, Jesus' stepsister, and the mother of James and John, the sons of Zebedee, Mary, the sister of the Theotokos, who was married to Cleopas, not to mention the many others who had encountered Christ and would later become apostles, such as the Samaritan woman Fotini, who Christ had met at the well. An apostle is one who is sent to give a message. The disciples became apostles after an intense three-year mentorship with the Master, Christ himself. Their apostleship became official and perfected at the descending of the Holy Spirit in the form of tongues of fire in the upper room on the day of Pentecost, fifty days after the resurrection of Christ. Like the twelve, the seventy, and all of the apostles, and equals to the apostles, we must also become disciples of Christ. This occurs through our studying the faith, reading the Holy Scriptures, and of course through prayer and fasting. The most important aspect, however, is discipleship, usually under the direction of a priest. This requires great humility. Only then will we be prepared to fulfill our destinies as Christians by becoming apostles, preaching the gospel, and teaching, making disciples of all nations, and baptizing them in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, as our Lord commanded us. Thank you.